Okay, so here we are. We have a circle that we have made, and now using the dist function here, which calculates the distance between these two points and these two points, uh, we are able to create a quick little conditional statement that says if the mouse is inside the circle, then give us a number, whatever the distance from the mouse to the center is. Okay, but if I'm outside the circle, it's not going to do that. So now, instead of just console logging a number here, let's have it play a sound. So I have three sounds I've loaded into this sketch. I'm going to give you the blank template of this just so you have these sounds loaded. If you want to load your own sounds, as we've done with some other projects, you're more than welcome to do so, but just to save a little time on that. Okay, so I'm going to make a variable here. I'm just going to call it sound. Since I am working with uh, audio files, I need to use the uh, preload function. So I have to load those sounds into my sketch before I can do anything with them. So I take the variable I made here, which is sound, and I'm going to load capital S sound in there. Remember, I need to include the name of the sound in quotes. So sound one dot wave uh, and in quotes. Okay, so now if I press it, I'll see that quick loading there. So no error messages. So my sound is loaded here. Okay, and now I'm just going to jump right in and say if I'm inside of the circle and I click the circle, then play that sound. So sound one dot play. Okay, so now I'm outside. I'm clicking outside the circle. Nothing happens. I'm inside the circle. Oh, what doesn't it want? Sound one is not defined. Oh, so what happened here? I called my variable sound. The sound file itself is sound one, but my variable is only sound, so that's why I get that. Um, I didn't do that on purpose, I messed that up, but uh, just to see what I figured out there, okay? So I'm outside, I'm clicking, I'm clicking. Also note, when I got that error message, it didn't happen until I was inside the circle, okay? But now I'm inside. Okay, nice big booming sound there. Hope it didn't startle you. Okay, so I'm outside the circle, I'm clicking, nothing, I'm inside the circle and I get that sound, okay? So now I'm off and running. I have a circle that I can click inside of and I can trigger a sound. So let's uh, make something happen here, okay? Um, I could do, uh, I'll, there's a few things I could do. So remember, I'm gonna use now the is playing Boolean variable method that goes along with the sound object. Um, so I will trigger an animation and then that animation will happen while the sound is playing. So I'm gonna do if sound dot is capital P playing, and then I need to include parentheses and then an additional parentheses. So these parentheses go with the is playing, but this parentheses goes with this parentheses for the if statement, okay? And this is just a Boolean, it will be true or false. So while draw is updating, if the sound is not playing, if I haven't triggered the sound, it'll be false. But once I click in the circle, it will trigger the sound and it'll be true. So let's just say, uh, let's start with a fill. Okay, maybe I want a green circle here. Okay, but I'm also going to have an else statement so that when the sound is not playing, the fill will just be 255. So it will go back to white. Okay, so here I go. I click, click outside the circle, nothing happens. I click inside the circle, turns green, and then once the sound is finished playing, it goes back to white. Okay, um, so that's one thing I could do. Let's add something else here. Maybe I want to play around with the size, okay? So I'm going to do C size. I could make the, just change the size uh, to that. And then always, this else statement is good because it will reset everything back to whatever I want it to be. So now I go in, I click outside, nothing happens. I click inside. And it gets big and then it gets small. Okay, so I could do that. I could, instead of making uh, a big size there, I could do some animation. So maybe C size plus equals three. So it'll just get bigger and bigger while the sound is playing. Okay. But then I click outside the circle and nothing happens. Okay, I could change like maybe this to CX. So it just is gonna move. Oh, why didn't it come back? Because I don't have CX set back to normal here. So I could do that. So let's try that again. Okay. 
I kind of like the size. I kind of like it just getting really big immediately instead of the animation. But I just showed a few different ways we could do that. So I'm going to go back to 200, set the size to 100 like that. Okay, so boom. Since that sound is sort of uh, interesting like that. I think what I am going to do though is I'm going to move this over. Okay, so I have that. And notice everything worked, okay? Since I have this variable, I only had to change this number and this distance function still works. Everything, the ellipse, everything changed just with that. So one of the benefits of variables. All right, so there I have it, okay? So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how we could use a circle as a click area, but maybe not to click on a circle. So what I'm gonna do is just create a click area somewhere on the canvas, uh, and maybe it connects to another shape. Uh, so just having an area to click, it doesn't have to be the shape itself, but part of a, another shape perhaps, all right? So I'll get to that in the next video.